Welcome to The New Monks. This podcast is dedicated to those of us on the journey of evolution. Through these episodes, we will dive into the lives of individual people and discover what they have learned and how they have handled their growth. Welcome to episode 15 of the New Monks podcast. I am Jane Muller, your host. And in this episode, I speak to movement medicine man Muti. We discuss his journey as a teenager coming from the hood and finding his way out through dance and using dance to heal his trauma. At such a young age, he has definitely lived out many, many lives and tells his tales in such an alluring way. We discuss his near-death experience at the age of 12, as well as other mystical experiences that he has had whilst travelling, his relationship with psychedelics and finding God again after his second ego death. He's doing a lot of work right now and workshops through movement and other such things, so definitely keep an eye out for him and if you ever get a chance to attend any of his many projects, highly recommend it. Links are in the show notes in the comments below. I hope you enjoy the episode. I certainly had a lot of fun just listening to his many, many tales. And it's, uh, it's a very mystical one. So thank you so much for being here. And usually how we start is if you can just take a few deep breaths in and out. Should I add a little meditation or Just a little, Just a little short little. intro. Mm, just taking a moment to land in this moment. Taking a moment to fill your lungs, get oxygen around you. Hold, hold. And exhale a big sigh. Ah, I'm releasing any resistance and anticipation. Breathing in again. And hold, hold, hold. I'm releasing another big sigh, sinking deeper into the earth. And this one, just taking the, the gift to fill your lungs with as much oxygen as possible. We're taking another deep breath in. And hold, hold, hold to high heaven and release. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back on earth because we're Love here it. to bring heaven on earth. Thank you. <laughs> so yeah, if you can just tell us how you're feeling right now. Sensations tingling. Uh, it's often when you can bring your full totality and awareness into breath, you calibrate yourself, um, which is very much like coming into some of the work that I do, is like you very much calibrate yourself to another plane of experience. Mm. Yeah? So you're with the breath, so that has its own rhythmical cycle. So uh, with the respiratory system going like this, you know, like that, doing like that, all of them has its own motion, they have their own dance, you know, their own kind of channel and code that allows them to rivet and, and flow, really. So, um, um, I was just going to flow now, and I was like, where's my flow? I was like, oh. Um, now I was just having another thought, it's just like, this cycle, so basically there's cycles of rhythm, yeah, and in your homeostasis, there's so many cycles of rhythm, but one that's so important is, uh, there's obviously that blood flow, respiratory system, um, the occipital brain, how it moves, also your cerebral spinal fluid, the people don't realise that's actually in the, in the centre of your spine, your spinal cord, yeah. the fluid that binds all the intercostals that swims through, but those in themselves carry like such rich new kind of stem cells, when babies are born, they have this infinite potential in that, and you wouldn't believe it, but the, that spine in itself rivets is such a, um, a rhythm that it sounds like it's going super fast. When you have uh, practices like cranial sacral biodynamics, which I trained with with Rosemary at the Taoist Resort Center in Thailand, big up Rosemary, 
big up the Dallas, it's not man touch here, all man then, cheese up. Um, Rosemary, there's such an acute sensibility of experience and we ask ourselves that, how many layers of experience can we allow yeah. ourselves to tune into? Love can that. we lift the perceptional lid of this illusory to be of five senses and can we start to create the space and by creating the space, it's just allowing ourselves to be patient, open our heart to receive so we can listen. So that, inf that information that we receive from listening can inform our present moment and how to adjust and how to attune altitude. You know, and this is where we have three dimensional planes cross over. Mm. This is where we allow ourselves to go, okay, I'm experiencing, say for instance, like the plane is a three dimensional plane. Like I'm, I'm, I'm doing like one, two, three, right? Yeah, three dimensions. Say for instance, you're, you're actually like here on the axis. And then say suddenly like you tilt and this side of you starts to tune here to this side of your crossing. Yeah. And then say this one decides to go here. Where are you on now this graph? Yeah, yeah, yeah. On your altitudes of experiencing consciousness and how does that inform your reality? And once you receive um, whatever connection, whatever transmission you ch tune into, whatever re reflection, revelation rather, whatever revelation you tune into, how can we start to bring pieces of them back to integrate and start to upgrade our human construction, our, our human technology and our construction kits for how we build our reality. Love it. So it's like, how do we work with these technologies now, these ecstatic technologies? So when we're talking about breathing, you know, I was talking about the energy being static and alive in itself because, because you were breathing and connecting to your own energy flow, energy becomes more alive and, and it becomes more present because you're bringing your sensory ability to that experience. So then you're tuning yourself to the energy that's alive in the space. And obviously you're in a room filled with oxygen and carbon dioxide, you know, you've got other, um, you've, you've got other components that are all there that are just swimming in a room waiting for them to be connected and then bonded. So you've got all this potentiality that's constantly existing in you until someone can go, and there's some sort of reactions inside mm. of you that excel that out and it becomes something else. So you said now you, f you feel that like you felt you were just in the flow. What does that feel like? Flow? Yeah. Great word. <laughs> um, very funny, 21st, 21st, ten, uh, 21st century terminology, right? We really, in this day and age, must create a new glossary for ourselves yeah, to attune to these noetic truths and at attribute them to new uh, terms that are owned by us, that are rebranded, that are decolonized by Western education. In our own mindsets, we must reclaim these terms. So flow in itself, um, the, the, the defined uh, notion of it by Flow Geno Project, Stephen Kotler and Jamie Wheel, authors of best-selling book Stephen, uh, Stephen Fire, Prometheus, if you've read that, great find. The Advancements of Flow and um, its ability to accelerate your, your uh, processing ability. They say the acronym is STIR. To be self in the state of total selflessness, effortlessness, timelessness and richness of information, STIR. Right, this, this is the acronym that represents what flow is in yeah. itself. Um, and by definition, it's also a, a, a state in which you feel, perform, and are at your best. Yeah. And, and for you personally, what does it feel like in your body? So for me, being in flow, from a technician's point of view, because, I, like, same way I'm talking about planes of existence, Flow is opening those planes of, re of, of existence to you. Once you've activated them, once like the delics on uh, these become altered, sta altered states, these altered planes that you bring back and they become altered traits and how you integrate them into your behavior, you're upgrading yourself. So it kind of feels like open, like expanding. Well, how can I say, so, same way I was talking about the flow of the respiratory system, going around in the lungs like this. Boom, chat, boom. So if, for instance, you're engaging in flow, you're moving your energy in this motion. Yeah. Like this. You're opening yourself to more planes of existence, more planes of awareness. Okay. You're tuning your awareness all the way that it can keep going up. But what the thing is about flow is that you have to allow yourself, catch the diagram, because I'm expressing it in flow. 
Mm. Words can only convey so much. They're ideas. You must tune into your own noetic truth of what these is, the poeticism behind them. So in that, it's very much with flow. It's about how much you're willing to die. How much you're willing to surrender. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah? To truly surrender into the becoming of this moment. Do you allow yourself to dance with the infinite? To drink the nectar of your fruits that you have so laboured? Will you allow yourself to step into the 10,000 hour state where there's no need to decide? Every decision is simultaneously made as one is is fulfilled. Because it's it's easy as breathing in and breathing out. Mad, love that. Because they all, because we like, on a real level, all of these things are just layers of, the layers of processing. Mm -hmm. Like, we have, you know, what altitude you are on on your uh, conscious ability to to comprehend certain things. It's like, you have to be aware of certain processes so you know how to actually defragment certain uh, experiences or certain things you've received. But if you're aware of how, like, advanced processes work, you can break them down and see their pattern in all of existence. And all of reality. That's why we have the code, the flower of life. Because you see that they're replicated in existence, in nature, in every living source that is the reflection what, and, and, a, and a creation of sunlight and earth. Oh. You know? You're seeing light manifest in a pattern oh, right, that's that the code. does the code that comes out and then becomes plants and then grows. But creation. you see exactly creation. So yeah. you're seeing that as an equation. You're seeing it as a symbol, yeah. which actually it's light transmuting into the earth, photosynthesizing, doing some sort of reaction, and boom, you've got life. You you know, so, it's like, so it's like think about if you think about that fundamental process, yeah, of how light transfers and grows life, yeah. you have to think about your own processes and how you manifest as a human being. How can you learn from these simple yet complex uh, a sustainable um, uh, natural natural yeah. natural processes that exist that create a balance a sustained balance you go to the Taoist I mean you know I was at the Taoist resort centre I was chilling with Man with I've been in, I've been with the monk I've been with, with them and I've, I've sat with each different faith and I've been like what is this process trying to teach me about connection to source or connection to life connection to nature yeah. you know because they're all planes of awareness when you can when you can be with that process that awareness allows you to tune in to those faiths and what they've discovered on that plane of, of inner standing, that plane of awareness. You tune into that, you go, wow, then you can start receiving from all of the things that their monks around the world say they go to a certain uh, altitude, a certain uh, awareness of consciousness, and they start to channel in that space. They put ideas out into that plane, that plane of consciousness. If you can now tap into that plane of consciousness in another part of the world, you're sieving around the memory bank of these monks who are putting profound things into that plane. And if you can tap into that and drink that down, who knows what we <laughs> can behold in terms of creations for artists. Because it's really now about restoring the role of artists in our society. I'm 100% down yeah. on that. <laughs> you know, really, but then also equipping them with the ability to tune into the spiritual planes yeah. so they can translate these revelations into I sonic frequencies, performances, into visual, like, visual art pieces, into a range of different things that essentially allow people to process them without having to digest the, the experience that that person's had to live on or the, the, the complex... Uh, literary understanding that might take the frontal cortex of your brain to process my words you know <laughs> instead i have to design it for you in a visual diagram and express it with tone yeah. and then you get it you know so i'm i'm having to change my processes to express our process as well i just would like to t- which is um, translation which is translating language and then you go to the other place which is about we have so many languages on this planet we have so many variations of human being can you look and learn the eternal and first Language, the mother of all art forms, dance, movement, oof, oof. body. Okay, yeah, this is great. Because then, can you see the mirror of your own body? Can you see where there's the resistance in your body to allow more mobility, to allow full expression, to allow light to seep out of that, so that plant can now grow through that space and reach out its full tethers. Yeah. So you yeah. are a dancer, right? Yeah. One movement of the many medi- things. Movement medicine man. Yeah. Contemporary dance theatre choreographer. Do you want to just like director. tell about tell us about how you got into dance and well dance after I've just gone on a oh, I, oh, oh, oh like shabaga like just like well dance <laughs> well dance well it, it's funny because like dance is the eternal bro dance is the eternal I and I give that. I give thanks bro 
because we're always in motion, you know. Mo yeah. Movement is life. Yeah. You know, emotions are simply just energy in motion. And they're asking us, that's why when people get stagnant with their energy, they don't know how to process it. You have to dance through, you have to move through that energy of their emotional state. You have to move through it. It wants that, it wants that, it has its own rhythm. It has its own uh, scenography that wants to like pour an energy out of you to, so it can, it can clear it. Because nat your natural system wants to clear it. And when you step into the dance, the, be the, ab the ability to look inward and have the lens that can self self witness itself and see where you see where your recurring patterns of movement that are basically why are you recurring patterns of movement are you trying to prove you're a good dancer are you trying to keep a persona up are you are you actually you in like a, patterns a, of dance movement. patterns of dance movie okay. like you're getting stuck in things because you're repeating them out of safety yeah out of comfort and like and how can you move your body to through, the fullest? yeah and how can you use dance to author your manifestations yeah. You know, what the one thing I've been teaching at the moment is body, my, my movement, alchemy class, body church, come to it if you want to come. Body church, it's, the body is treating the body as your church and dance as your prayer. Love that. Because my company is called Infomotion, right? Infomotion means the reason for your motion. That is your energetic signature in space and in that you can encrypt these altered states and invoke them in spaces through movements. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know I called something here boom 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 invoked trauma whipped it round boom just to present it in this small space yeah. but it's very acute stuff yeah. and that's the mastery of movement because it goes way beyond you're actually like energetically attuning the dimensions of your yeah. being but so, I, I really so I really want to hear about like how oh the origins yeah yeah I'm getting, I'm getting it I'm getting it I'm getting it like <laughs> and like how did you discover all of this through dance you know because right. like sometimes people start dancing and they just dance together. yeah I know, I know. <laughs> so it's like it's like, with dance, how can I say, I'll be just straight about, real about it. Mine was in the hood, yeah? I was gangbanging with my G's. No, my boys, but they were my brotherhood, you know? At the time, that's my community. I would ride, ride or die for those G's, you know, at that current time, because that's what we were, you know? Everyone's got rebellious natures. They're how old rascals. Were you? Like, for this period? I'd say about, like, 12 to... Nice. 11, 11, 12 to 13. Okay. Very like, good. obviously, you, you're not really, you think you're doing it, but you're not really doing it. Okay, cool. But when you're in secondary school, it kind of changes a bit. So, essentially, I, through my parents' divorce and my own childhood traumas, I had such, such a dark energy that was, would, would rage in me, that I was scared to allow to be prevalent when I was in gang violence and what I would come out in me and I would see... I was like, this, there's this instinct to defend and to survive and to overcome more powerful look, things that look more powerful than me, but can come out. Yeah. And I thought to myself, wow, it becomes this other side of your being that you also can become scared of experiencing wow. because you're scared of how powerful that side can be. Yeah. Metaphors as well, yeah. because I used to call that side the beast. Yeah. You know? And it's really protective. It's very... In, it's a primal instinct. Yeah, so yeah, deep, yeah. deep, deep, deep. Yeah. Like that. So then, um, yeah, exactly. You know, so you're with your boys. You're seeing people getting banged up. You're seeing people getting shanked and shit. You're seeing people getting robbed left, right, and center. You're, talk you're trying to battle your own morality in that whole scenario. And um, through that journey, I was always doing circus, sports. I was doing acrobatics. I was always, a, I was always doing drama, theater. I was always a performer. You know, talent show doing Crying Out Soldier Boy. Actually, that's how I really started. I did Crying Out Soldier Boy, year seven, talent show. And all the older boys in my school were like, and like, I did the freestyle at the end. You, and then it was like my freestyle. I did the waving and shit. Everyone got up and was like, oh shit. Oh, yeah, and that yeah. moment I realized like, fuck. And then all the older man them came and spudded me and they were like, you are a G, never stop dancing. Wow. Never stop dancing. Wow. You are a G, you are a G. So all of the olders in the hood were all like, yeah, you're gangbanging, but Mutti, you got the talent. You've got the talent, yeah? You need to get out of this shit. Wow. You've got the talent. You need to be the one that gets out of this shit, fam. You're doing it for all of us, fam. And I was like, rah. So these times Dude, now, yeah, yeah. Nice. Yeah, it's, it's all a bit mad, yeah. And so every man in my school is like, yo, you're cool. Like, you you talent in sports, but you're also talent in darts. So then I did this project called Overture 2012, which was like 120 kids, Royal Albert Hall, London Symphony Orchestra, redoing Stravinsky's music to... Uh, Starling's, a rec recreation of Starling's death, dictator of fucking Russia, recreating his death. 120 kids. Starling was 
black as well, which I was like, yes, bruv. <laughs> you know, for any of the black kids out there, he was like, yes, yeah, Starling's black. Peace out, Starling. Anyway, that's how I know. But it was an incredible project. I experienced the full theatrics of contemporary music with okay. contemporary dance and formation with a concert of a 360 audience because I'm a 360 performer, you know, talking about traumatic times, ordeals for people and how that story was told so patiently and gently, but at the same time with such a firmness and how that can translate that story to as a medium to other people. I thought, I thought that's transformative, man. Yeah. We're telling other people's stories and yeah, that's yeah. transforming us as well. Yeah. We're stepping into that state of mind and which I didn't realise later is actually epigenetics. Yeah. We're stepping into these altered states of consciousness to take ourselves into that role, that plane of awareness. Yeah. And in that we're awakening parts of our DNA that we don't realise can either have in trauma related to what we're dancing about or whatever and instead of it being trauma that freezes up, we move through it and allow ourselves mm. to perform through it. So what tended to happen after that was that I went through a series of mind-stretching, spirit-opening experiences wow. for, from being um, the guy, well, we did Overture 2012, yeah. I did Love and Cat, which is a Centre for Advanced Training Program, a contemporary dance program for young, young artists looking to get into professional dance. Yeah. It was at Love and I, I travelled at 14, going to ballet on the Mondays. I did contemporary on the Thursdays, and then I did a whole day session on Saturday with all the fucking faculty. And you had contemporary, ballet, and creative, and creative with a, a range of different tasks that were about how you use creativity to construct dance with imagination, with visualizations, with, um, with objects, with rules, with choreography pieces. So you got to try out your ideas. I got to create my own piece there. I got to create my own piece, and lo and behold, what was my first piece about? It was to Linkin Park, Cure for the Itch. Oh my days. Love it. Cure for the Itch. And the main movement was this. And it was something like, it was some shit like this. Because it was like, or something like that. And you were like, because it was like some sort of virus that was coming inside. <laughs> and it was like a virus. And it was like, and we really took it there. And it was like, man, I had five people to choreograph a dance and tell my story that I wanted to with the music that I loved. I was like, is that not magic in itself? I am thus manifesting something that I visualise, teaching other people, and they are executing the vision into physical form. Mm. I'm thinking to myself, if I'm not in the best career path to practice manifestation for the world, I don't know what is. And I always knew I was a choreographer. I always knew I was wow. a choreographer. I was always a visionary. Since young, my parents have been like, two things they said to me. He said, you should be a freaking director. Yeah. You know, <clears throat> you should be a director and stick with dance. They still, that's what they said. Stick with dance. It's always... You know, so through that journey, I was workshopping with all these varieties of like neurodiverse environments of different people from different backgrounds, working with creativity and seeing their way of approaching a task that's varied and being like, huh, huh. And then seeing my choices and seeing where I make choices from. Are they from my ego? Are they from my intelligence? Are they from a deeper sense? You know, and getting to listen into where I make choices from and what I'm actually trying to tell my audience. Mm. So then you have an idea of like the process of constructing an idea, how and what you want the actual audience to feel from your idea. Mm. If it's if it has an intent, rather than just like yeah. I need to use this performance as my catharsis. Yeah. Which ended up being later, straight after that, is that I started doing solos. <laughs> Bonobo Black Sands City in Islington College, I was studying dance, I did the solo. There's all this fucking <laughs> and, and, but, so you know what I'm saying so that's like all my dancers were deeply related about what was going on inside of me yeah, yeah, yeah. and it was about me wrestling with my light and dark side my next one was like so, turning out the old and new cycles did um, you find that this has really helped with like your trauma this is what I'm saying yeah. like so I was cre in that was wow. nurtured in a vibrant thing thank you I love to go like this in it like. <laughs> 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 is that um love that is that kudos to one incredible man Lee Michael who saw the enthusiasm that I had and coached me through yeah. he started a youth dance company called Shoreditch Youth Dance yeah and that was a, a sacred a safe space mm -hmm. for us to move through ourselves mm -hmm. to be seen for who we truly are outside of society but as an artist and a being with something to say and that simple fact meant that we were all treated as professionals 
we were all, re- we were all, ha- all respected each other and there was also a code, there was an ethics code to live by because we we want to we require ourselves to be met at this level that disciplined me you know that creatively challenged me that also like allowed me when i was simultaneously in sid i was shot in you know i was um emceeing at raves i was sometimes emceeing the night before i'll go lab and cap train because every dance i would emcee the night uh, that that night MC in a club, do some da 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 da, and then the next day go to class and be there doing fucking contemporary dance, and I'd be still in my come down, you know, like. Mad. But then I'd be sweating through my come down so into mad. such a prof- a profound state of just bliss, where your mind just quiets and you've just body exhausted, sweated out toxins, and you just don't have anything to think or say. You're just pretty present Good. to receive. You know, so you're infinitely in this present state of like anything you give me, I can adapt and move into. So my flow is open. I'm in yeah. an open flow state. That's crazy. I feel like because you were doing it all at the same time. Yeah, bro. I was living. Like I was living. Escaping, I was living double. I was living. I was living double lives, man. Yeah. And it's not even like the thing is. It's like it's not even like I, I thought. At first, I thought it was it escaping as well, but it wasn't. It was that yeah. I was. Um, doing research i was curious like yeah it was was real life education on one side you know i had (laughs) you know on one side i've got like myself being the professional i know i can be but also being slipping up over my own lazy tendencies my my misconduct of time because i'm in different worlds so they have different arrangements of time and i had luckily i had role models mentors and i had brothers in Sid growing up, I had other men that were all on my age range who were all going through the same thing. Should we pursue dance or do we want to do other things? Because it's the other thing is that I was really passionate about event management. Okay. I was doing event uh, curation, you know. I was also emceeing events and having collectives and social movements and shit. So that was all when I was really young, you know. I had a collective called Unconscious Collective. We booked Big Nasty to do Garage. We booked like Devil Man. Nice. We got Unconscious Collective, Hold Tight the Family. And, um, that was the origins, the squat raves to there, and we used to team up with gash bastards and the underground, some crazy shit would happen. So then all of that is simultaneously like, I'm, I'm, I'm a guy in that scene. I'm a guy. Like, I made my own name in that scene. But then also it's like, I'm at college and I've got my own scene where it's like, I'm stylish, flowing, nah, 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 like, you know, like, Different you start getting older. <laughs> and then there's the dance world where it's like, I'm, st- I'm kind of like, showing off that I'm both of these guys, the stylish and the man who's made himself in the underground world for bass and like emceeing through just the energy he is. And then I've got that in dance where it's like, I'm being asked to be completely clear and professional and open. And sometimes these two characters would seep into that, you know? And it'd come up and that, what was the hard thing was that for me to differentiate that they're each nurture and atone a certain part of my being mm-hmm. to be better mm-hmm. and i had to do i had to allow each of them their own space to breathe yeah. to experience without thinking that one needed to, to hijack the other yeah. and come in it's like this is the time for the that. professional dance artist Muti. this is your time to be the master of ceremony mc and turn the hell up out of this shit this is your time to be a stylish innovator in your in in, in innovating culture and bringing people to to a kind of like new vibe it's like, oh, okay, just through poetry and the words that you are and the, and the being that you are, you know? How old did you say you were around this, this point? Oh, I'm from about 17, 18. Okay. Yeah. 17, 18, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, previously to that, I'd done, like, you know, I'd been promoting for festivals. I'd always been people festival tickets. Yeah. And then, obviously, at festivals, you're always bringing through things. You're sorting people out. You're making your own monopoly when you're at festivals. Yeah, yeah. You're working that whole thing out, that game of business. And there was something that happened when I was 18 where I started doing a lot more events. And I was still shot, shot in a, I was just connecting deals. And I realized that one of my business sides was taking over my, my inner child, my creative inner child, my businessman who thought he was the man in business, sharking, making money, being the fucking man in business. Myself, yeah. I'm talking about myself. Yeah. <clears throat> because I had, a, I had actual awakening when I was 10 years old. What? But when I was eighteen, what? when I was eighteen, I had an ego death, okay. which was the thing that, because I I was already doing those things because I had these experiences. Yeah, I was born into it. Like I was, you know, like yeah, it was young. It was young. It was young. But 
10, year, ten years old really was because I had a near death experience. What the hell? And because Tell I because ne- I because ne- I nearly died yeah, because I nearly died that invoked me to be conscious of alternate like realms. Actually, nearly died. What yeah, like, like actually almost died. Like I could have died that day. Like what happened? I actually thought I was gonna die. I actually gave up on life and just. What happened? Um, yeah, man. So I was in um, I was in Burundi. I was in Burundi, Lake Tanganyika. Deepest lake in Africa, second biggest lake in the world. It is powerful. And when you're young, you think you can play with nature. You think you can play with the forces. But bam, smack, they will teach you the lesson. They need to. Just so that you won't ever forget that. And when that happens, you don't ever forget it. So, obviously, I was a strong swimmer. I've been taught to be with the water. The water's always called me since I was young. It's always tuned in. The elements always taught me something. Because of movement, because of energy, because of play, elements have always taught me to dance in their energy, you know? Purely because it's almost like they're flirting, it's almost like they're, they're teasing, and it's just like fun, it's play. When you're young, it's innocent, you don't think of anything. So I'm in Lake, Lake, next to Lake Tanganyika on the beach with my family, my dad and stuff. I go out to the water, <coughs> and I suddenly just go out to the water. I'm with my cousins, the oldest of my dad's lineage, Simo. I'm with the oldest of my dad's lineage, uh, yeah, my, 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 oldest, my oldest uncle, Simo, with his oldest son. I'm with my second oldest, uh, my, my uncle Jean-Pierre, R.I.P. Jean-Pierre, rest in peace, and his son as well. And then there's me. So there's all the three sons of the lions, of the masculine side of my family. We're all there. It's crazy. Like, And <clears throat> on that day, you know, there was a weird storm that was kind of coming in, but it was kind of like weird distantly far back. Somehow when the storm is there, like this kind of like electric, it's kind of like, oh, let's go in before the storm comes, you know, kind of thing. But, yeah, but you can't really tell that it's a, exactly as a child, but it's just like, it's an energetic thing. It's somehow just calling you into yeah. the water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, and it brings a kind of like twinge in the air to something. And long story short, I went out into the water. I swam, 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 swam far to the point where one of the guys on land is like, there's one guy who swam well far. He's a light-skinned brother. You know, he's a light skinned brother. He's a Muzungu, and a Muzungu is, is a white, is a lighter skinned person. You're talking mm-hmm. about you? Yeah, because I'm brown and everyone's dark in my country, you know. So they're looking at, oh, there's someone far. Lo and behold, my cousin also, Arnaud, who's, who's my uncle Simon's oldest son, comes to swim to get me because it's just brotherhood, you know, like, you know, your family shouldn't get each other. But he never had swimming lessons and he thought he could master the seas, but I had, I had I could swim. So we go there and obviously the storm starts raging and the, the waves start going in a certain way. Moments go by, we get to a point and it's hard to breathe. And the water's coming. <coughs> You're there. Yeah, and then suddenly you feel your your cousin's coming. He's like, "Muti, Muti," coming up to me, and I'm just like, "Wow." Looks over his shoulder. He gets to me, and he can't swim, so he's using also my body as a way for him to swim himself. Um, and that creates force, and that creates tension, and that creates like ang- angst. You know, like your body goes into a bit more shock and survival mode into those things. And uh, there's a moment where. Because of that, it suddenly just like took us both under, and then suddenly we just started like swim, going apart, and then it was just like going in a different direction, and suddenly there was just just crashing. And the more I tried to swim to him, the more waves would come over me, and then suddenly like we're both just there, and just like oh, fuck. and then there's this moment when the final one just goes oh, and goes into your mouth, and then you're like, and you're like, that's it. I surrender. And then suddenly you just go into this, the light just goes. <laughs> it's clear signal, just like, you are not meant to die here. Wow. This is not your end. Love the accent. <laughs> you get up and fight. You are more than this. Damn. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> 
suddenly I've got this whole force of energy that waves through me. I'm just suddenly like, I don't stop. I don't stop and think about what direction I'm going. I'm just going, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going to my wit end, my full capacity of my power is saving myself in this moment. I'm going, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going, I'm swimming, I'm swimming. Up to the point where I start to go to towards and then I come up to someone and go, doom, I bump into them and they're like, oh, and it's my other cousin, he's like, Muti. Wow, I'm so happy you're very, you go this way, go this way. So he sends me there, I don't, just, I don't stop until I come back. I get onto the shores and I just go, <sighs> and I just get back onto the shores and then suddenly we just turn around and then it's just that the storm's still going on. And we just turn and I'm just like, and then my dad just sees me, he's like, you're thank I'm just like, you're okay. And then I turn around and then we just like, look and just see this hand pop out the water and then disappear. And you're like, fuck. That day, my cousin died. Oh my God. Arno, Kaimba, oldest of Simon. And that was something that happened to me at 10 years old. Wow. And I was the last person to see my cousin and that took me to some places of really opening my connection with God at that age and speaking of what would be destined for a soul if that would happen, the guilt I feel, the remorse about being upset like more I could have done. And then the expressions of seeing him after, seeing his body after on the bed and having to do the cross and praying. And then this real sense of, you know, he's not lost, I feel his spirit. And starting to build this connection with his spirit and to create ownership of this spirit that is actually, their, their legacy is now living through you as well. Their, their, their prophecies come through you as well, you know. Their light comes through you. There was something that builds a relationship. And for a while, I, I would dedicate performances to him. I would dedicate moments or Mad. moments where I'd score something or win something or that I'd dedicate it to him to honour his life. And I will never forget that moment. And because of that, I became aware of celestial planes, of planes of uh, angels communicating but they don't really they don't communicate in ordinary ways you know it's not like you know there's dreamlike forms where they can take representation yeah but if not they 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 they, they communicate in really subtle shafts of light they communicate through light you know they communicate through, um, and i say that and one of my brothers just called me and he's an angel he's an angel he's one of my angels as well really? he's one of my brothers yeah which is beautiful um he communicates they communicate through light and you start to be aware of how light is communicating with you. And then when you start to see how light is communicating to you, you do not see yourself as separate of that. You see that that light is also connecting to another part of your light. And then you know that there's a part of you that is eternal. And when you can start to meditate, go deep into yourself, create the space where you can go on this dimensional plane and to attune your altitude through traumatic experiences where you have to overcome things, through moments of deep resonance with your own performative ability, through moments of ego death, through moments of prayer, through moments of connecting to your ancestry, through moments of uh, uh, winning, succeeding, in moments of um, bringing your love in an unconditional form right. to someone that you don't feel it was ever meant to do but then in turn you receive some sort of revelation in your own being about how your light works in you mm -hmm. once you experience how light works mm -hmm. then you go wow that how's that process work and you realize i'm an operator of light i'm an instrument a divine instrument of that light wow. so that light needs to just transfer through me yeah. and when you realize oh shit let's transfer through me i'm a i'm a, I'm a vessel i'm a channel for all of this when the moment you think you you could die and you realise your higher self and your connection to the spirit is, is calling you for something greater. The moment you go off and you also think, you know, there's another part to this as well. Like, there's a moment where um, through these divine connections, you also can, you know, I told you about my ego death at 18. Yeah, I had another one when I was probably 22. Another one where <coughs> I started um, becoming really powerful and um powerful in the sense like i had the constant potential ability to heal spaces you know 
I'd just done training the Daoist Resort Centre in Thailand, doing Qigong at 7am, Kundalini Yoga, flying low, passing through with Master David Zambrano in his unique practice, gathering and sending, you know, passing through, compositional awareness of three-dimensional space with other people and spirals, all amazing, hyper-tuning you, your senses. Then also Thai massage, cranial sacral, which I spoke about before, the, the cerebral spinal fluid, and Thai massage, which connects to the meridian lines to release tension and emotions and stuff. So I just practiced that. So I've done deep the study. I've done contemporary dance. I've done all the things I wanted to do, and I've gone somewhere now and researched all the things that I'm already naturally attuned to, and now I'm going to upgrade myself and see what is really capable. So I've done that. I'm in Thailand. Boom. Crazy stuff happened. Got stuck at the border between Viet Vietnam and Thailand. Was had food poisoning, some mad stuff. Ended up getting to New Zealand basically. Got to New Zealand now, and uh, I was dating an older woman at the time. She was around some interesting habits, let's say, and I was the the, the pacifier for some of those habits, mm. let's say, in those circles. Uh, so I was teaching at one point yoga. I was doing massage on the the dad who had a stroke, the mum, all of this. Uh, and there was a certain level which I realised I'm now currently operating as just like not with money. I'm only operating in what I can offer in spaces as healing. Yeah. And what I can contribute in spaces as my currency. And I realised I started to operate on a currency of consciousness. And in that I realised, oh, this is a highway. This needs to be completely open. And I basically like got some next level souped up moments. Realised what I bring now without letting go of the lower astral... Um, Fears that are related to security survival, which is yeah. all the baseline root chakra. Yeah. So my creativity can be fully uh, open and flaring, and my solar plexus can have the will and determination to go in the full radical face love that I am going forward. Um, but then there was a moment where, from New Zealand, you know, I did my solo entheogen, which is a big, big performance. So I told you before about, um, which I'm going to get to the ego death later. So like the big performance. That, um, yeah, it's like builds up because yeah, it's so good. My life story is crazy, man. I'm so I've, I've it. lived out bare lives, man. Yeah. I've lived so many lives, and I had to identify when I'm when I'm going into a new afterlife. You know, I'm going in cycles. I'm in a new afterlife now of who I was last year, nice. and also from the moon on Sunday. From so like after last week, the like full moon. Yeah, yeah, man. You know. It all happened in a very short amount of time. Well, they all, yeah, because right. time moves faster. When you're, when you're w working with these planes of existence, these, these planes of awareness, <laughs> you're growing exponentially. The same steps it takes for you to get from 1 to 30, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, yeah. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 30. It's the same steps it takes from 1 to, blah, 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 to all the way to a billion. Yeah. So uh, ask yourself, do you want to be walk, work, walking from 1 to 30 or do you want to be walking from 1 to a billion in the same amount of strides? Ask yourself. Huh. All you have to do is just upgrade and surrender and die to the old version of yourself and let go of that yeah. so you can truly become. Thank again. you so much for sharing that story, by the way. Mad. I don't think I've ever really shared that in. Uh... Wow. But I recognize now that it's part of my medicine story. It's, yeah, it's part sure. of the story that has made me, and I've owned that story now as, as a medicine that I can share with other people. Yeah, I can tell. You know? Like the way that you spoke about it? Yeah. It's it's just, you were very calm, wasn't it? I went through the shadow. Yeah. I went through the shadow with death all of them once, you know. I, I really like about that story, like, when you just said, this is it, I'm done, like, I surrender. Yeah. And it was in that moment when you surrendered, life came back. Life came back. Mad. And you tap into the true resource of your power. Love because it. when the ego is in control, it is galvanizing energy from your life force. It's yeah. not connecting to life force itself. Yeah. It's using your life force to make certain things happen. Yeah. You know, And that's great if you want to be proficient. If you want to build a, a discipline and routine around certain things, that's great. It's harnessing your shit. But if you're using that to do other things, you know, that over, over, over the capability of that energy source, you're burning yourself up. Yeah, and sure. you're going to put yourself in thing that is way over your head but if you're connecting to source and you're galvanizing energy from source like creation energy or from nature or from these or, or from fire or from water or any of these alchemic uh, elements for transformation you come to eternal principles of life that have constantly existed to balance the form of, it, of the forms of nature 
Yeah, you know, no. And you are a form of nature. You are a form of nature. So yeah. all in itself. So it's like, if you can tune into that. The na- they always talk about the natural, the natural laws of nature. The natural laws of nature. Yeah, you have to be with it. That's what the Tao talk about. You know, yeah. when I was at the Tao resort, sometimes I was sitting with some high level, high level Donnie speaking to them, and they said, one parable that comes back to me always is, yeah. the Tao can never be read from a book. Yeah. As if it's something to just acquire through a literal knowledge. Yeah. The Tao will happen in a moment of pure connection, of pure truth, of true, pure breath of life. So it's like a breath of life. When you are at the top of the mountain top, yeah. and the, the, the air breezes the, the top of your scalp, and suddenly you, you become aware in something, in the way the wind is moving through you, the way yeah. the wind moves into like, you and with you. you it's realize, alive. It's, it's alive, exactly. Yeah. And you realise there's no separation in those elements Nothing. because you are of them and they are all compositions and, and natural laws of nature. Which is the Tao. So don't read it, walk to the top of a mountain, have some <laughs> psychedelics, ask yourself who you are, ask, ask ask spirit and discover what happens when you talk to to the laws of nature. Really, I'm saying it, talk to the laws of nature and let and listen so they can speak back. So you can train your inner ear yeah, inner ear to listen deeper. Because that's what we require now. To less speak less, yeah. to listen deeper, not with the ears, but with the heart. Yeah, you know? big, with the big, inner big. ear. Yeah. Well, that's what I talk about in my workshops, in my practice, living form. Living form, colon, living form, colon, M. Mind, body, and spirit. Yeah. Living form, colon, M. Mind, body, spirit. And what's mind, body, and spirit? That's union, that's yoga, that's totality. Mm. What's living form? We're living form to be in living form, mm. in totality. Yeah. So don't, it works both ways. It's we're living for this, you know, mm-hmm. reminding ourselves what yeah. we're living. So when we're in my, when we're training my workshops, I'm always like asking people, are you living or are you dying? If it's the idea is dying, let it die. If it's not serving, if it's got life, go to the fullest of its life, progress, let it take you to a new threshold, it expands your, your capability, your range, and let it see how it doesn't stretch back to the same diameters, but actually it's expanded now. Can, once you stretch the comprehension of the mind, it, it can never go back to the same uh, 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 form it is now stretched and it, and and it has that 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 now that leeway. So um, mm. with living form, yeah. with living form, my practice, uh, living form is the pin one of the pinnacles of my life's work. Living form is a culmination of everything I've experienced through contemporary dance, crump, popping, uh, dancing on psychedelics in parties because of all the parties I've done in contemporary dance. I would, doing psychedelics, I was microdosing psychedelics and doing them in controlled environments and I was dancing and I'd suddenly start chanting some powerful stuff and I'd suddenly start doing something called sacred dance where you become a prayer of dance for the people you're personifying a, a, a moment of presence of totality in yourself in front of people and people are being so aware of this because it, the focus becomes that because you're receiving transmissions mm. through sacred dance mm. the movement of life is existing in this being the Tao is existing in this moment in totality now mm. So that was happening and I was like, what is the state I'm going to? I mm. keep going to these altered states and they're teaching me these channels about how to express these messages that I can't express in literal words. I'm mm. expressing them in physical forms and energetic signatures. I so I was like, well, well, I was like, of course, you yeah. know what I mean? So in, in, in that, I was like, well, I must research this and do this and, and to be able to see if I can workshop it and present it to people. How are the ways in which I can activate and tune people's sensory yeah. ability in yeah. their voice yeah, yeah, yeah. So they vocal transmissions, third eyes, they can receive an intuition, and also in body and uh, the, the, the physicality. So from there, through the psychedelics that I experienced, through the altered states that I arrived to, I picked back these breadcrumbs that I allow myself to find this trail to this altered state that I could achieve again in workshops and just dancing themselves. And I realized, oh, it is capable to arrive at that same state without psychedelics. We just have... We've got the breadcrumbs, they're all faint, they're there, but we must find a way to guide our creativity, our flow, our channel, our surrendered instrumental state to be in the constant, uh, progressive nature of living form. So are you still giving the workshops? Yeah, I still do workshops. I'm going to do, in maybe March or April, I'm going to do a two-day masterclass, which is going to be taking people through... um, really a way to develop allow give a space for people to develop their own practice nice you know? yeah because that's what i'm realizing people uh really have some sort of new technicality that they're finding out in themselves the new ability to create movement nurture and it's 
applying it to whatever their holistic practice is and integrating it but first it needs to be in a nurtured space with someone yeah. who, who is aware of movement medicine yeah. and because I can channel as a direct mirror yeah. and what I've received from training quantum relation shifting which is a whole other conversation is that when I'm in the mirror of you I can see your higher self your eternal self what it's transmitting to you through the mirror of being present with you and saying oh I see this possibility that you can see so that you can manifest your highest timeline in that yeah. By purely you vibrating in your truth, it starts to awaken more possibility. Yeah. Were you expressing yourself fully, it awakens more possibility. Your signal starts to be aware of different broadcasting services that are more higher truth than yeah. the illusory of the lower astral planes. Mm -hmm. So living form allows you to break through those thresholds, tune into a, 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 a full altitude of yourself, step into the ability to manifest from your highest truth, and actually uh, integrate these things so that you can mm -hmm. upgrade your construction kits. Mm -hmm. So what happened is... This summer, I did a residency for scientists and artists. So I've been, I did a, 2016, I did a workshop, a big one, researched. I ended up teaching my practice in nine countries from then on. Mad. New Zealand, wow, Cambodia, Vietnam. I did a research cycle in Vietnam at the top of the botanical gardens with trees that were a thousand years old. Everyone doing qigong with me. Fucking, okay. yeah, no. Yeah. You know, and also doing agility combat stuff, which is all about seeing your patterns and seeing how we work in a controlled, a specialised environment that lets you know of how you can self-witness your patterns and how you have to adapt in combat combat situations and creating those situations. So I was doing that, took that in Vietnam, then I just came back and was like, what is, I did a research the year before, the year after that as well, and then I did a one last year. But this time, I gathered artists and scientists. This one was for my festival. Current of consciousness. I'm just gonna put your Instagram in the notes so people can find your work. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? Like they can they find my work, but we should put some links about stuff that's coming up as well. Yeah, yeah. So I run a bunch of little events. But I, I guess you can be, they can find it on Instagram. Yeah. Or, or if you'd like to know more on services, yeah. DM me. There you go. I run a class. Shout that. Um, I also want to go back to the Thailand. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So... <laughs> Whichever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So all kind of... What, the second ego dip? Is that yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, that's going to come. Um, <laughs> so with this, you realise that you have this ability to transform, essentially, at will, through your ability to adapt. And, and you become a shapeshifter. And when you travel, you realise that you I can shapeshift that. around the world. And shapeshifter. You, the more you allow yourself to shapeshift, the more you allow your full capacity as a human being to to experience the evolutionary standards of our species. It's like, let's inherit that our species now is pioneering a new form of evolution that is around the ideas that we are attributing into spaces. And if we look across the past uh, decade, you know, um, not decade, sorry, millennia, you know, you'll see that we have evolved as a species more from ideas in the past millennia than we have done in the past 2000 years. You know, and that's what the currency of consciousness also relates to. It's that how what we can inform ourselves that can now be a palette in our construction kits for how we build a reality. Yeah. But then there's some other things that it's like who has got the joystick in yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. You know, is yeah. it spirit? Are you humble to your connection to source? Can you be in the power principles? That's be in the power principles. So it's like I'm in alignment to the power streams through me. Or are you stepping out of command and thinking that you are there? You know. So what happened in Thailand? There was a. <clears throat> incredible New Zealand was incredible I did my show and Theogen yeah and Theogen was my one of my biggest solos that last worked to date wow um, I was in a foreign land in New Zealand I premiered my professional one hour solo with visual projection visual art I got my visual uh, arts person to send me a projection from across the world send it to me I designed all the music uh, what well, edited really did the lighting did it in a small theatre that's used to having music and theatre and done contemporary dance on there done a show called uh, Koha which Koha means offering uh, a means of engagement and the means of engagement was the second curated event that I did called means of engagement um, and it was entheogen is uh, a sacrament that you can take that can take you to altered states of consciousness essentially and entheogen is uh, um, yeah. you know it it it, it you know, it's an entheogen is like, how do I say, it, it electrifies, ignites you into that space, right? Let's just say that. 
So yeah. I was looking at what are the infusions in my life mm. through performance that allowed me to harness the full totality of my being, light and dark. So, you know, you've got the piece, starts, I'm like this. Everyone's there waiting. My friend's hosting, it's beautiful. I've invited two friends to guest perform. It's a whole shit band. We're doing a Q&A afterwards. We do a channel poetry session in it. It's like incredible, like end of, round off my trip in New Zealand, the best thing that ever happened, it was fantastic. Basically gets to this middle point where I've showed the baseline human experience of like fear, love, responses, uh, childhood, older, adults, adap uh, adapting into this form and all of it's narrated by Alan Watts. I'm doing this crazy dance I love Alan Watts. with Alan Watts and some crazy sound. And then it gets to this last moment where I'm just there and I come with a bowl and I've got this water and I'm just like, and I used to have really intense eczema and that used to be like a source of my anxiety. So when it, I would absorb energy from spaces, it would manifest in, in my eczema. So I've always been an energy absorber since I was a kid. Since my parents got divorced and I was three and I went into hospital when I was like four years old because I was temporarily blind in this, this eye. Twice in this eye. Twice in this eye and once in this eye. Nice. My bro. Parents divorced, absorbed the energy, manifested it in a crazy way. It was like, wow, well, what am I trying to show them? What am I trying to show myself? Like, so health uh, as vitality allows me to be in my clearest alignment. So it's amazing that you've had dance to like yeah. help you through all of it. Yeah, dance. It's like, how can I say? It's like I don't even know if I like. Yeah, the experience of giving me the tools of dance, but it was always something that was in me as nature. You know? Yeah, for I just sure. had to like learn what that was again and again, yeah. which is fantastic, and it's about the nurture of that environment. So yeah, infusion. I'm there with a bowl. I'm yeah. suddenly just there and I'm just like digging my hands in the bowl and like I'm washing my body and I'm like trying to clean my scars because I'm, 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 I, I find it hard to accept how hurt I have been yeah. and, and I'm not allowing myself to transmute it, you know? So it's like, oh, and then suddenly I'm scratching so hard and I'm like taking the water in me and I'm slipping all over the place, like trying to get back to the water, did it? I'm slipping all over the place and it's like swimming and slipping and swimming and slipping, swimming and slipping, it's like through my being, you know? And I get into the water suddenly and I'm just like cleaning and washing and then I'm like, uh, uh, and I burst this thing and then suddenly it's blood. And I'm just there with like loads of blood on my hands and I'm just like, fuck, you are cleaning, trying to clean yourself at such, a prof uh, at such an insane proficiency that you in turn are sc scraping through the layers of your skin and causing yourself to bleed. Damn. You know, and causing more scarring. And I just wanted to show that image and I'm just there like, cut and closed. <laughs> First half done, come back on and I'm like, in freaking chalk pain. And there's like this light that pops up and I'm just like, this African elder's talking. And it's just like, talking really like, it's like ancient alien, basically. Like, if I was a Zulu alien, basically. If I was a Zulu alien talking to people and then I'd do some mad dance, some crazy shit, go through time warp time, go through the visual projection, suddenly like, I have this moment where like, I've gone through all the layers of human being, I've transcended to a place, because it's all about a journey of transcendence, like in performance form. I've done it, uh, Zulu aliens, I've, I'm basically, because I also did ayahuasca about two years before I did that piece and it changed how I started creating performance pieces. It changed how I wanted to make performances. Mad. And I wanted to like, inform people about performances. Wait, and this, and this, you were 23? I was 21 when I did Ayahuasca. Okay, yeah, yeah, but yeah. 23 now. Yeah, yeah or oh, 22 when I was there. Mad, yeah. that's yeah. so mad. Bro, it's mad, like, this is the thing, like, mad. an hour of talking about my life's hard, like, because it's so <laughs> long for me. Anyway, that piece happened, it was sick. Um, in the end, I transform, I got this butterfly thing, and I become, like, I go into the cocoon of light and suddenly go through this visual projection and I go through the nexus and then suddenly come out the other side and I transform into a butterfly and then I... I become like in a white gown and I'm just like, yo. And I just say this like last piece at the end in spoken text and then it ends. And it just like resolves everything because it's like, there's a, an eternal white you that's just like white light. That's just like, you know, you come back to this purest yeah. presence. Yeah. And then the first one was like a dark old shriveled dude who was talking. So it's like all of these expressing the cycles and laws of nature in my performances. Because yeah. you show them how they each have their oppositions and how they're in perfect time to support each other. And the ego death thing? That you were mentioning? So basically, after doing that performance, I was on a mad one, in it Because I was just like, I've harnessed my power! Wow. I know exactly what I'm here for. I have no hesitation. I'm, I know exactly what I'm meant to manifest. So in Vietnam, like, 
I fucking started teaching contemporary dance, I started teaching contact dance, I started hosting parties, doing parties called The Witch Doctor. Why were you in Vietnam? Because <coughs> I basically, after New Zealand, I went to Cambodia to a fire arts and spirituality festival where I was teaching classes. I was teaching, I was teaching movement direction gear because I went on my travel, my big okay. like, okay, your travel, yeah, you have yeah. no money, you have no nothing, you yeah, have to survive yeah. yourself, you know, you have to find out how to wake, make, initiate yourself as a man in this world. So, Love it. Um, then you go, then you go, um, Vietnam. Cambodia, oh. so we're in the Fire Arts and Spirituality Festival and along that way we were all microdosing psychedelics, I was teaching classes on the beach in the morning, but you had everything from like um, stick and poke tattoos to hoop yoga to learning how to do dragon staff, uh, contact staff, how to use roped up from top fire artists around the world who were all there to perform on Koh Rong Beach in Cambodia. Amazing culture. Big up all the free flow, free flow crew and flow mods. Um, and in there, I was teaching my workshops in the day, but at night I was being challenged to step up as a performer because everyone was wielding fire. You know, and I've never wielded fire in a performance. It's crazy, like, what? But I was like, I've always wanted to do that, though. <laughs> yeah, I've always wanted to do that. First night I didn't do it, second night I took a bit of acid, and I was just like, and then I just realised that how acid, psychedelics as a tool that if you can break through your own limitations or create a physical act that allows you to break through a limitation on acid, yeah. you start to dance with the infinite. Yeah. And I often always need to do that with acid. You need to break out the realms of yourself so you can take up the shell of yourself and yeah. then come back to the infinite space. So I was spinning fire and I fucking like got it and I was like, I had to keep moving otherwise it was going to fucking be hot and burn me. So I'm just there like fucking suddenly doing all this fucking... Mad. Fucking spinning fire and shit. You know? And then fucking <laughs> doing the fucking thing. And Love it. it up. And then fucking doing some fucking six levels and shit. Six levels. And then you master it at the end and you're just like, I'm a fucking do wizard, man. Do that? I'm like, I'm a fucking. You're like, yo, that shit's wizard shit. And there was some crazy shit that was happening because the Kong's a party island. So there was people, we were hosting parties, so there was bare people that were coming to try to party. And we, tried to hold, we had to hold the vibration because they were all fucked on drugs. And we were the fire performers who were keeping the intention in the yeah, light, you know, yeah, the fire. Yeah, yeah. So we had these mad, like, mad battles between, like, mad drunk, fucked up people on Koh Rong and us trying to hold the attention with the fire and it yeah. being super nice. Yeah. I'm really in flow. Yeah. Um, and having to keep the balance of those energies. Yeah. So I suddenly became, like, after that, I went to, we went to uh, Otres Village where a friend OC hosted me as an artist teacher to host more workshops and support me and give me space to live while they did more performances in, the, in their festival in Otres, and I was like, yeah, I'll perform at Otres as well. Performed there, no woman, no cry on stage with everyone. It was fucking lovely. Did another fire performance, and then I became in a fire collective called The Gods and The, and the Goddesses. And when we did the fucking fire show at the end, I choreographed, I choreographed the fire show. So I had experiences of, because I looked at everyone dancing, and I was like, why is everyone in the sand just staying in their only same yeah, position? Yeah, yeah. Why don't we just create some like dimensions of space to go yeah. like that? And then people do that, and then suddenly there's a person revealed here. And then I was yeah. like, just do that. And then I was like, oh, I was, thinking, I was like, oh, I can choreograph fire. I can grow. I've grown as a choreographer. I'm not just a choreographer for dance. I can choreograph pretty much anything in performance now. Yeah. I recognize that. And the fire taught me that to master my fear. And it's every single time there's a moment where you Love master that. fear, but you master it with the elements. With the freaking elements. You know, mastered it with water, had to master it with fire. Now the fire and me are like, we're working nice. together. Powerful fam. Love that. So yeah, you overcome that, came in that group. Met some cool chick called from from uh, America, from California. She was got pink hair, spinning fire. She's well cool, playing ukulele. I was like, fuck yourself, all you're cool. And we were so cool. We started hooking up, and then like she was like, why don't you come to Vietnam? I'm getting a place. I'm living there. Henry as well, who's this guy? He's crazy guy from Colorado. Henry, who's just freaking. Like, like travel, travel life. he's like he's spin poi, multi-dimensional poi, while he's taking us and do mad bumps and stuff, and then fucking harness the fires of crazy way. You're like, how do you even do this? Like defying gravity in itself, like defying reality. Um, and then, yeah, he's like, yo, come teach contact dance in Vietnam. So I go to Vietnam now, 
I go there, I meet the whole scene, there's a festival there. They're like, you need to do stuff at our festival. Other people are like, yo, you need to do more dance classes. Yo, you need to do some music with us. I do all the open mics there. I start getting sick at open mics. I realise that I can host my own fucking show in music. I do a half an hour set of a band. I'm thinking, I'm going to... Two Korean girls come up to me, they're like, oh, where can I find your music? And I was like, uh. I was like, oh, I don't have any music out. And they were like, oh, we really like some. And I was like, maybe I should fucking start a band. I think my band would be called Mutti and the Solar Plexus. And that's where Mutti and the Solar Plexus was born in <laughs> Vietnam, baby. Love yeah? It. And Vietnam and HRC, Hanoi Rock City, bro. In that building, Hanoi Rock City, this is what I'm talking about. I was living in Vietnam with a community of artists, forwarding conscious beings who would meet up and spin fire, do classes, everyone was teaching English, and there was abundance of smoking weed and drinking, everyone had motorbikes. And it was hot, it was sunny. Everyone was happy, mate. And we made our own festival. We went and fucking went up to the top of fucking Vietnam. Sounds like a dream. Bro, it was, some, it was literally <laughs> some mad shit. So when in the Solar Plexus happened, yeah, I basically realised that my band was so makeshift and it was just dependent on who was ready and I could just basically improvise at any show myself. It was just dependent on that. who the instrumentals were there and what music I was going to channel for people. Yeah. I basically like curated two of my own events and put my band as the headliner. <laughs> so curated the event, yeah, bro. It was mad. So I curated this event called the Witch Doctor Love in it. somewhere called um, with Lynn. What's her name? Bird, not Bird Cage. Sidewalk. Sidewalk. In Sidewalk, Lynn had this sick venue that was like half a fucking like car wash. It was turned into a bar and they had free rum and coke on Saturdays and balloons that were like this big. She was like, I'll pay you to fucking curate an event on a Saturday and you can give out free rum and coke. I was like, what? Sick, I'm doing that. Did an event called The Witch Doctor Now. I went to HRC, got my friends to borrow me some fucking sick, mystic, um, decorative stuff from the festival that they do Quest. Big up Quest Festival. RIP as well. I put two massive eagles there. I got my chick at the time, um, the pink haired girl, I'm not gonna name names, but... Pink Girl, um, no, her name actually, Liliana, awesome girl, real. Um, she, she was doing face painting, I had like my band playing and people sitting at different desks and I was in, in this costume with face painting shit. And I was like, ah, I'm the witch doctor. you <laughs> come to my lair. you <laughs> come to my house. <laughs> well, you must know the first rules and etiquette of this realm. What do you want? Drama, hit me with that beat. <laughs> Well, in my manner, that's how we get down, you know. And then like do a whole funk number. It was like it was like cabaret. It was like telling people about the playful space that I've created. And I was going up to people and doing like weird brain farty kind of questions to confuse them, and then be like, oh, 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 but then magic, pow. And I was really like being a magician at that time. I was mad. I was like, and then. And somehow I did an event, hosted with my fucking band, got other people to perform. My boy just flew in, I got him to headline. Um, MC Nook, Big Up Nook. And then my boy, John Lamb, was this other character who was like the minister of me. I was the witch doctor. And he was this white bald guy called John Lamb. Hi, I'm John Lamb. I'm John Lamb. Everyone, we're going to circus. I've got all the, the props. Big Up John. And he was like, oh, he, he loves theatre, he loves acting. So I was like, I'll give you a role. You have to announce me in, in the way that I'm an urban myth yeah. at one point. So he's like, yes, Moody. Da, 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 da. Like, oh, but beware of the witch doctor. And by then, uh, we created a circle and I'd invited three other f fire performers and announced them to perform at the witch doctor as well. Because it was sick. Because I wanted to, I always loved doing events that brought all these elements together. Yeah. So it was like a carnival, you know? Yeah, it was like yeah, extravaganza. Yeah. It's not just like one thing, it's like, multifaceted creativity at every yeah. every angle you know yeah. because that's where we are create we're creators you know yeah. let's bring that full full dimensions of play so he announces me and i just come in and i fucking he's like beware of the witch doctor and he just puts the staff on his head and i just come from behind the crowd boom, grab the staff and by that point i'd become really good at fire staff mm. so i'd mastered it and now it was my own event and i could perform fire staff as my own little like yeah, yeah. i'm the fucking g like Oh, so I'm now using fire stuff as a means to be like, oh, oh, I'm I'm showing off as well, you know, there's an element of me showing off and then also at some okay. parts being projected on as like, 
yo, fuck, you're some fucking awesome. Like, I've never seen anything like you. And that still stands. That still 100% stands. But sometimes your ego takes yeah, it the wrong okay, way. Okay, okay. And your ego starts to build up a, a character yeah. of yourself that lets you think that you're above people. Yeah. Because you're working in a certain yeah. way. No, you just have access to higher planes of consciousness. That means you're receptive to more signals and channels. And you're hypersensitive to, to reality. So that how acute it is, you can receive information on a, an acute level. A very more, a, a acute level. But you're not above people, yeah. you know, you are still with people, you know, you're just working with a certain um, channel. But when you have a spiritual ego, you can start to think, oh shit, I'm the mother effing yeah, messiah, yeah, 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 bro. Yeah, 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 yeah. When you start getting messiah complex and start thinking, yo, I'm here to go to everywhere and heal everyone. That's the shit that you start going like, yo, you are a healing energy. Wherever you're being sourced, God wants you to be. In that moment, you'll be a vessel of that, you know. But I think sometimes when it gets too, oh, like... And it's like very much like thinking that you can heal everything. Yeah. That's the thing. It's the trick. You can only facilitate that. You can't think that you can heal everything. That's where the ignorance comes in. And that's where you think you're too sick. And then I had moments when I was in Vietnam where people were freaking stopping me on my motorbike. I was, bear in mind, I was teaching Qigong. I was doing fire shows. I was knocking yeah, down yeah. venues. You I, was, I was on, I was on fire, mate. Like yeah. literally on fire. But I was on a sub vibration, egoically attuning myself in a certain way that was not divine light on some levels, you know? It wasn't the purest light and I had to reform that. Yeah. And, um, you know, I also had some crazy experiences there, like with psychedelics that really, you know, there's that one time I did my show Entheogen, that perf I, did, I did a sample of it in Vietnam. It's a sick venue, visual projection is crazy. Choreographed this ritual dance piece downstairs uh, on top of like, Board and palettes and crazy music and everyone's in costume and doing choreography in different spaces. It was sick. And then my friend at the end of the night decides to give me a triple tap of acid. He goes, Phew, here's a triple tap. I'm like, what? I'm driving on my motorcycle down here. He's like, we're all going back to Mark's place. I'm like, big up Mark Harris. Big up, big up the fan. Big up your wedding the whole time. Love. And um, I feel like I'm talking like I'm on radio as well. It's crazy. You know, I was really like, yeah, I forget that people can actually see me, you know. Um, so I'm riding my motorbike, and then we're like, oh, we're going to Mark's house. We're all still a bit trippy. It's fine. And then suddenly, like, as we drive off, my bottle of water drops on the floor, and I'm thinking to myself, no, life is water. So I pick it up, put it in, and I was like, fuck, they're gone. Where are they gone? I'm just going to let spirit guide me, so I'm just driving now. Going around, I'm like, ooh. Grab into this place, like, what's here? And then suddenly I drive past something, it's like, mm. what's that temple? I've never seen it before. Oh my word. Drive, park up the thing in the temple, walk in, suddenly I just see the mother tree. Mm. The big and um, big mother tree. And I'm like, what's this mother tree? What's it's like this? a mother tree is like the central tree of a sacred land. Oh. So it's like a portal between oh. uh, interdimensional realms, but you have to offer something to it. And in that, it has to accept your offering and then open your awareness, opens your third eye to see in a different way. These are all new things that not a lot of people are even aware of how you can channel existence, but people but, just look, need to... It's a tree. It's an ancient tree. Yeah, it's an yeah. ancient tree, like a thousand certain years so old. So you went to the in, temple. temple something. And I'm bear in mind that like, after my performance, I'm wearing like, it's a mystic hat party, yeah? So I'm wearing this googly-eyed headpiece with sequins and three eyes. I've got like tribal fucking tat. I'm wearing this vest top that's like open here and I'm wearing these nice yogi trousers and like flip flops and I'm walking around like super like powerful with my presence it's just like walking to this land and then the land's just like don't worry you'll be safe here and I was like oh okay come to the tree and I'm looking over the water and I'm talking to the tree the tree's like I see you have many answers to questions you have not yet asked and what? it was like talking to man on some what? next level but it was like it was like it was like I'd met one of my teachers you know my like my ancient, ancient teachers, teachers, ancient ancient teachers, yeah, man, true. and then it was just like, do you still have fear in your heart of who you are or what you have to do? Because you have nothing. And then I was like, oh my word. And then it was like, okay. And then suddenly, boom! The temple doors, the inner temple doors open. I'm in the temple grounds. The inner temple doors open. This is five in the morning, by the way, Hanoi. Five in the morning in front of Westlake. <laughs> Five in the morning, doors open, <laughs> and the mother tree goes, because I also had to offer something to the tree, I had to yeah. offer tobacco, because that's something, yeah, yeah, that, tobacco. Is, because that's something that I'm, I smoke, you know, so, so. Yeah. so I offered that, and then the tree said to me, you don't need to hide, don't be afraid, this is all part of what I'm lighting for you, or, 
the, it's not as articulate as that, it's more just like... Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't that obvious. Yeah. Just like talks like that yeah, and you're yeah. like, oh, you have to interpret that, you know? Yeah, and then it like I find it comes into, the words come in through to yourself. To yourself, like, yeah, 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 you have to, yeah, exactly, yeah. 100%. Yeah. And then um, I'm going to temple doors and I'm like, and there's this man who's there like sweeping the temple five in the morning, he looks over, sees me, he's like, what the fuck is this monster? Like, looks like some mad stuff. So I'm there now, this, this is a crazy man. story. This is a crazy story. Crazy story, yeah. <laughs> so I'm there now, and he basically he sits me down. No, he doesn't sit me down. He just, like, basically clears the space and then creates the space for me to sit. And I'm like, oh, okay. I suddenly just walk he in. Knows. I'm, I suddenly just walk in front of the temple where there's, like, a big Buddha statue, all offerings. And then it suddenly hits, like, six o'clock, yeah? Suddenly I'm just there meditating, just, like, praying, meditating. They start to gong bath me for 45 minutes on ancient Vietnamese bells. Just in the temple grounds. Who's they? Those the people, people on there, the yeah. temple. Because they're waking everyone up in the temple and what the local village is, oh. what, what they do as a tradition. Okay, okay. But it happened to be the exact same time that I'm there. there. Yeah, yeah. And I'm there meditating. I'm there meditating on Triple Tap of Acid. Already connected to the mother tree, she's open dimensions, planes of existence, and I'm just there. And it's like bursting me through, like throttling me through different levels of my being, and then transporting me, transporting me, transporting me. And then suddenly it just ends, and I'm like, it's like, wow, that's mad, that's so mad. And I suddenly became completely aware of the space in a different way. I became aware of the space, the temple, as if this was my land. I became aware of the temple as if what happened to my kingdom, what happened to the people I left it to, which I then began to find out that I started to channel an ancient emperor of that land who had whatever his own message was for them. So suddenly I'm walking and I like, realise like, oh, I'm thirsty, I need, I'm thirsty, I need fruit or something. I walk and suddenly I walk without transitioning, I just go to and I, go, I know exactly where the fruit is in the temple. Mad. And then suddenly I'm walking, I go up to the top of this bell, I see the bell, and I start like gonging it, and it starts reminding me of like some mad wars. Like, it starts reminding me of these crazy wars. And I start turning around, and I start professing this mad big speech to all these people who would usually be foot soldiers, but there's no one there. And these ancient women, these two, sorry, these two women who are working on the grounds, they're just looking at me like, what is this? Like, it's like, they're looking at me and they, they could be saying, I have two things. This guy's channeling some ancient emperor or look at this motherfucking dickhead. Yeah. On the top of the temple in his crazy outfit. Yeah. Black, I've never seen a dreadlock black man here as well. And he's never, yeah. you know? And, and I was like, just in this channel, like, say the good dick or not. Crazy channel, yeah. And I'm just walking. And suddenly I walk down and I start like praying with all these bonsai trees. And I start placing all my energy in the trees that surround the belt. And I was like, what the fuck's going on? And then suddenly like, the presence left me a bit because I started to press it in the trees that were like protecting uh, that, that vibration. I don't know what I was doing, but I'm witnessing it. Yeah. Because the ability to self-witness means that when channels happen, you can witness it with, ha so without constricting your yeah. channel because yeah, it's yeah. something that instinctively is just doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't have to decide it. You know, you just have to let it be. So I'm there now and I'm walking and I've still got my googly eyes and trying to play. And the women are just looking at me and they watch me pass and I'm just like, And I'm looking at them and I start to smile. As soon as they smile, they're like, turn it down. And then I'm walking and then I'm like, one of the women runs off and she gets me, gets a bottle of water and she comes up to me and goes, So it's like the two things that I needed in those thinking, mm -hmm. thought vibrations in that space was fruit and water. Yeah. I found the fruit instantly. She gave yeah. me a bottle of water. So I go and get a bottle of water. I'm drinking it, finish it. And then I finish it and then I'm just about to go to my motorcycle. And I just go find a bin, so I'm walking to one of the stalls that are just on the temple grounds. And I just go to put it somewhere where there's this woman, I'm saying, do you have a bin? And she's like, no, no, who no, come closer. No, no, back, go, bad spirit, bad spirit, bad spirit. So she's talking to me as if I'm a spirit because I've got the googly eyes. Also, whatever she sees me channeling as well. As a bad spirit, she's like, go, go, no, I'm, no, 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 sorry, go, go, go. Bad spirit, bad spirit. You know, and I'm just there and I'm like, well, that's scared, like, and at this point, at this point, I'm also like half conscious, so I'm like in a really delightful, loving space because I've channeled yeah. in the space, 
cleared and I'm on my acid trip, but like my acid trip has panned out to just being hyper present, you know, yeah. hyper sensible. Yeah, yeah. Hyper sensible. Uh, and then I walk over to my motorcycle and what happens, like, this other woman, the woman who gave me the first ball, she comes over and goes like, she comes over with a bag of like, no wait, what happens is before that, yeah, I get, I give the water bottle, the woman's like, go, go, shoot, bad, bad, bad. Then afterwards, she has a talk with some other woman and she comes back to me and she goes, I'm so sorry, like, I'm sorry, can I ask for forgiveness? I don't want to receive bad juju from spirits. Here's four bottles of water. And I, and I just, but she's saying it like, I'm sorry, as an offering to give back to the spirit, like, I don't want to offend you as a spirit. Yeah. I'm just there, like, having a bit of jokes with it. I'm like, mm. I'm like, try and put the four bottles of water on my motorcycle. I'm like, put it on the motorcycle. And I know it doesn't balance equal, equally. So she, she's like panicking in front of my presence, like, and the bottles of water just rolling off the motorcycle, and she's trying to put it down. And I'm like, and it's not me, it's just whatever the teaching was to share with her, you know, whatever that was in that channel, I'm not deciding, you know. And suddenly, the first one we gave what ball, she comes over and goes, <laughs> she sees her friend who's been disrespectful, and in that moment, she comes over and just goes, here's a, here's a plastic bag with, with three bottles of water. These are all the bottles of water I've got left. Thank you for coming to the grounds and visiting. She's really humble. She's like really grateful. She's saying, "Please go in peace and, full, and be remembered for remembered in grace." I'm saying, "Thank you, thank you. You recognise what was happening here." Took the bottles of water, put them in a the plastic bag. I put them on the motorcycle. They're going off. The ones are like still recovering from my birth. The one I had to pick up the water bottles. The other one's just like, "Bye," like the peaceful one. Like, so I drive off now and I drive past these restaurants and I see all these people just eating and they just suddenly just drop their shit and they look at me. And in that moment, I drove off and I thought to myself. I'm pretty sure there's probably an urban myth about the being that is that human or that mon that transformation. Googly eyed, three eyed monster with tribal patterns, a black Korean with dreadlocks, open chested pattern. You ain't never seen that shit ever, you know? So it's like that in itself is like, oh, like, wow, there's probably an urban myth about what, mm. what occurred in that moment, uh, which is funny. No. So yeah, so basically after all of those mad experiences, I had a whole heap of experiences I really couldn't explain in words that were way too profound and way too like interdimensional and I started becoming very like spending a lot of time here and yeah, yeah, wasn't yeah. balancing my time yeah. between both. Yeah. So I was like, really like enjoying what that was. And then uh, there's moments in Vietnam where people actually would just, people I didn't even know would stop, feel my presence and come to me and say, can you be my spiritual leader? I think you're you meant to be my guru. But I think you, this, could you be? And I'm thinking to myself, get out of here. You, you can come that. to, you can come to my class, come to my yeah, class if you want to, but I ain't agreeing to any of those kind of contracts. Yeah. And then I realized that, and then this, this began to happen two, three times, four times, while I was practicing yeah. Qigong, while I was teaching all my things and doing healing, I started to realize I started receiving projections as being a fucking spiritual leader and then in that moment I realised I could fucking start a cult if I'm not fucking clever if I'm not fucking careful and what yeah. my mum used to say to okay, me is like okay. she used to always be like when she used to be like Damn. she's like Mui be careful you don't start a cult really? just don't start a cult and I was like you know, my, some of my friends are like, do it, Mui, for jokes. Like, do it for jokes. Just make a sick one. Like, <laughs> and I'm just like, no, guys. I'm like, the of it. Uh, you know what I mean? Like, so. So you became uh, really aware of this thing. Yeah, I became really hyper aware of this, uh, this, uh, this vibration that was attracting in the air and yeah. where I was acting on certain planes of existence and not grounding between yeah, 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 the bridge. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then thinking that when you spend so much time up here trying to talk from up here to there, you, you know, yeah. you're feeling yourself jumping yourself in the position of God outside of the principles of power of light, you mm -hmm. know, so you get confused. And uh, what essentially happens is you need to purge. You need to take a serious amount of stuff to purge. Yeah. You need to go back to church. Yeah. I went back, to, I found God again. Like, I uh, honestly came back to church and I went with my family and I prayed with my family and uh, God kind of just smiled at me and was just like, uh, you have always had a place here, my child. You know, you're a child of light. You're a divine child. You know, you just have to make your path. You're a new breed of medicine. So you're teaching people about new th new forms, you know, you are where light is transmitting a new mm. light. So know that all of this is just culminating into your journey for you to become mm. all that you mm. are to teach the world. Love it. And I was like, and then, and then I just cry because really what happens is you cry in deep humble yeah, in, in, in modesty. Modest. You're like, 
crying, like, how could I be so ignorant? You, you're crying, you're shedding your ignorance, you're shedding your arrogance, you're shedding any prejudice you had, any stigmatization that you were projecting out into space, any ideologic I ideologies of who you thought you needed to be to pre preserve anything. And you I cry think... all of that off, and you yeah. come back to the simple truth, Yeah. you know, the simple truth that you are a vessel. And I also think it's like crying in gratitude as well. After you've gone through all of those levels, yeah. then you cry into deep gratitude, like, I'm so thankful that yeah. God loves me. I'm so thankful that God still loves me, and the universe still loves me, and that we all love each other so much. I'm so happy, like... Yeah. So, yeah, basically, that was the second ego death. And since then, I've just basically given my life back to... Uh, in, in service of God. Love and, it. and since then... Love it. You know, me, and God are work, me and God are working on a whole other level. Like, like, what I have now detached myself from is... There's any idea or relationship to, uh, like, with each generation, with each turn of a cycle of a planet, there is a generation of guides to essentially come to the earth to guide the natural order of things and to be tuning forks in certain spaces so that the natural uh, wave length is an accelerated wavelength rather than a resistant or slower wavelength because we are exponentially growing so we must pick up at our pace. We must be progressive and break through to the place where we relax that frontal cortex and come into this ever vessel abundant flow, right? So in that, it's that people must let go mm -hmm. of control, mm -hmm. you know, after, and then step into the unknown. Yeah. So when you have guides that can show you like, hey, I'm going to show you that I'm doing that myself and I can do that and it's happening in my music and it's happening in my performances and it's happening, I'm teaching you the true nature of being by me being the true nature of my full being yeah. unapologetically yeah. with radical natures and a fierce love. Yeah. You know, They are all new, new codes, radical fierce love. So now I've been gifted with a whole bunch of new codes, new messages. Mm -hmm. You know, you'd have like preachers that would go and they would be like, I've got a message. I've got the word of God. I've got new words, but they're not words. I, I don't want to call them words of God because that's paralleling to a different uh, plane of, 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 of existence, a different awareness of, of consciousness in itself. We are now talking about new transmissions, evolutionary sinkholes that consciousness is seeping out into the world so that it can evolve the natural order and we can preserve life at its highest and in a chain of command that allows nature to thrive rather than survive. And there's certain ambassadors, certain agents of that new transmissions that are here to boot up, reboot up the system and to let go of those old constructs and step into a, a yeah. wavelength where we can receive how we can all collectively serve the greater, the greater uh, uh, heart song of humanity. Cool. <laughs> Do you want to talk about your, what you're doing? Like... Oh, shit. That was a good one to talk about me and then around that, talk about me off that. Yeah, yeah. Like what? What, what I'm doing now. Um, so. You've got your band still? Got my band yeah. still. Uh, working with a brand called Maya. Maya M M E Y A, Beyond Meditation. So I'm working with these uh, sonic scientists who are crafting sounds with binaural beats with 432 hertz attuned to bring you into states of meditation or states of flow for focus for chill, for sleep, for relaxing the senses. It's all on the App Store. It's all on Android. You can download it now if you email me and ask me directly. Um, you can maybe be in the study because I'm trying to evolve the natural order of how these sonic sonic therapies can be integrated into education or, he or healthcare sectors. Imagine someone on a deathbed in a hospital and they have headphones and they can listen to meditational music that takes their pain away or allows them to move through the energy of that catharsis on an internal level. Same thing we were talking about the external with internal. Imagine these sounds, music is the best, best way to do that. And imagine if these sounds could do that for them. Imagine if we could play this to nursery kids, to, sec to secondary school kids to get them into the state of flow before they start working. They come back in from the playground, they're all fucking crazy and then you play some music and you start, close your eyes everyone, listen to this music for three minutes, five minutes before we start work. Boom, everyone will be much more concentrated. I'm talking about, when I was talking about living form as a practice, living form spurred the understanding of altered states for embodied learning. So I've been on a research cycle at the moment to work with kids, teaching kids. I did a uh, summer camp in Vietnam. And these are your workshops? All my workshops and my practice, but it, then it went from dance and performance into how creativity learns a new yeah. language. Yeah. When I was teaching education in Vietnam, I was teaching English. And teaching a summer camp and designing a whole program, I realised that living form helps. 
I was taking these kids into altered states of consciousness to embody learning a new language, the connection to the real sensation of what they're expressing. Um, you're probably going to have to rewind some of these words because sometimes I talk really quickly because of the flow. I'm <laughs> just going to tell you that in advance. Um, so, yeah, living form of altered states of embodied learning. So, this is what I'm also in the mission of. I'm about integrating this, this brand, Maya, as a strategist towards it and as an ambassador of this new uh, technology to bring it. I'm trying to get a study with universities at the moment to do a research cycle with the most neurally diverse human beings to see how it could be most affected and integrated into society and whether it feels that it helped them get into flow and to work and what age range you think it would be affected for. Um, I've also got, yeah, we've got to do like researches in, in festivals and different things. We're going to do the mayor ritual um, and we're also going to do the sunset performance, which is because I've been signed to them as their first artist for Mayor Records as the first conscious record label. So I've been making music directly using 432 Hertz by Neural Beats and guiding audiences into meditative states for them to transmute whatever emotions using alchemical elements and seizing their power in the dance. Mm -hmm. So it's all of it in the ritual will be in the song and there's mm -hmm. catchy hooks like, you know, we are waking the fire. Just give yourself, you are the creator. Just give you a little sample of them things, you know. Um, you must all walk the path, path now. Like, deep things, but like mantras, rap, but at the same time putting it into really seeped out um, experiences that can transform you through that. That's happening soon. But watch out for that. That's going to be a show. I'm also going to be bringing a sample of that to Morning Glory for on the 2019th of April. They've asked me to curate the next Morning Glory for. Nice. Yeah, trust. And I'm going to bring as many diverse people together How for long that. I come? Definitely come. Be part of it, man. Um, really, I'm building a team for it. It's going to be a sample of what teams I would use for festival seasons as well. Because right. I'm going to be curating a stage at Anthropos Festival, Currency of Consciousness, my festival will be doing that. So I also run a festival called Currency of Consciousness, which is about the flow science, arts and... Uh, flow, flow science, arts and culture of the UK in flow, right? So I had a festival last year called Currency of Consciousness. We took over at Mirrors in London Bridge. We had talks from Dr. Gregory Gregory on the evolution of consciousness, Big Up Gregory. Uh, my brother so, uh, Marv Radio did um, my brother Marv Radio did a talk on did a workshop on the power of the voice through medicine circles. I did a talk on ecstasis flow, the science behind flow, what hormones released endorphins, you know. La la la. Uh, Menti the Awakener did uh, she did a, a money abundance transmission. We had Ascension C do the opening meditation, big up Naya, big up Rubes. You're going to do that again this year? Yeah. yeah. And, uh, nice. and we had you know, a procession with a live summer band through the whole venue. We had vegan sensory tasting. We had a live music show from my collective New Earth. Okay. New Earth is the touring temple live show. But what it is, essentially, currency of consciousness is a map of consciousness. It's what I received through Aya. It's a map of consciousness. And it's asking me to create a range of different experiences, multifaceted experiences, uh, multidisciplinary experiences where people can experience creativity, they can experience consciousness expressing itself through creativity. And we can look at the intersection between science, spirituality, and life performance art and the phenomenon, the entheogens, the epigenetics that activates in your DNA, the altered states for altered traits, the acknowledgement that we are all collectively pioneering consciousness. We are 2020 human beings. We must inherit the fact that we, our species has evolved now. We must upgrade our construction kits and we must be the creators of our own reality. And that's essential for how we move forward as a species. You know, in a stand fully. So that festival now, I'm doing another one this year, which is going to be across a very few venues. It's going to be in the September equinox, so the 23rd of September. And building up to that, I've got a range of a few different events that build up to that. One of them is Primordial Soup, which is the open mic for the Psychedelic Souls, which is me and Psychedelic Society. Anyone who hasn't seen Psychedelic Society, they're in Hobbiton, they're an amazing organisation and society, offer a range of heart-opening, mind-stretching uh, uh, workshops. So I run an open mic there every Saturday, uh, the first Saturday of the month, which is, the next one's I think the 8th or something, 7th, 6th or 7th of March. So that's a space for people to talk about whatever consciousness is expressing in them, whatever channels they've received and how they've been digesting their own energy um, in accordance to a challenge that they've been been asked to clear or overcome. Um, people do songs. Uh, I lead the whole space mm -hmm. as the MC, as the flow engineer, because I'm a flow engineer now. With my festival, I've been through workshopping, through choreographing, through doing these technical abilities of tuning energy. It's like 
I am now able to construct uh, specialized environments for flow to be fluid in its conduit. You know, and I'm I've been paid to do that for creative agencies, for businesses now, for environments. So I'm I'm creating flow type spaces for us to as a as a community to go through gateways, okay. yeah, and tr and be initiated together collectively. So it's a space for everyone to be coming to the mastership of their own energy. Primordial soup sacks of the society come through. There's body church. My movement alchemy class where we go through about 30 minutes of shaking meditation, breath work and toning. Then we go into workshop tasks that allow you to go into new physicalities and new sensory awareness of how your body will move from an inside space or move from a place of coming through you rather than like making it happen or dancing from another part of your awareness. And then there'll be either a healing or creative task at the end of it, either a quantum tunnel or a, a, a kind of playful environment that allows more What's the composition. Body church. Oh, this is body church. Body church. This is body church. That happens once a month as well. Uh, I've got the space. I'm just waiting for the time to book it. I'm just waiting for someone to go, I really want body church to happen. Mm -hmm. And then I'll go, okay, cool. I'll make the date. It's just That's amazing. Yeah, it's really awesome. People cry. People yeah, have written cool. references like I've got a whole new body. I've got a whole new lease of awareness and how I interact with life. I you know, people, have, people have grieved in my classes. Like I've had some real powerful transformations yeah. in my work. Like mm -hmm. I'm really humble to the work that happens. Okay. And I give thanks like for really like the, the open heart that I'm able to mm. hold my own vulnerability in such uh, self-love and merit that I can transmute anything that I'm scared of into more love, yeah. that I bring that into my spaces, into my medicine circles and allow people to, to transmute any of those things themselves. Um, then there's native, which is five, there's five elements to my festival, five, well, five events that lead up. Native is we get an indigenous dancer from abroad, from a, a, an indigenous dancer from another tribe. Last year we had someone from the Navajo tribe. Um, big up my G's at indigenous. Native, indigenous dance, someone from an indigenous tribe. We had someone from the Navajo tribe who came down last year. I brought him to Anthropos. We hosted a performance with him with Nicholas Orlando um, and his dad from, his, from the Navajo tribe. They showed their traditional dance and we did a workshop with the traditional dance so people could experience the vibration of wow. that dance. So they can receive that transmission. That's mad. And then I brought them the next day to Jago where we did a panel discussion with them and the tribe, the, the father, about uh, tools and pillars of their tribe that have allowed them to integrate into society but still keep their traditions and what we could learn from in that process and then also to workshop that traditional dance and then we all receive that transmission as well. Mad. And like, mad. With like tassels and shit, it's pretty mad. Um, there's that one. Then there's sensory supper club, multi-sensory eating session, and then um, the lift goes supper on. club, <laughs> primordial soup, uh, native. I'll put all the links in. Body Church. And also, the Flow Kitchen, which is going to happen at the end of this month in Jago. It's a night with three multi-instrumentalists who each play three different instruments, sitar, tabla, various different music, guitar, uh, drums, aqua drums, trumpet, trombone. I get three dance artists to come down, improvisers. We get audience members into a space. They write a sweet story, a sour story. They put it into a hat. We pick it out. And we say, what's that sweet story? Oh, I used to get kisses from my grandma. Someone says, stands up and goes, oh, what, what was the experience? Well, what, my grandma used to come and give me kisses as a kid and it would give me shivers. And then you'd be like, oh, okay, I've got that impulse for co for creation. Someone else, the, the sour story. Oh, I stepped in shit last week before I went to work. Oh, fuck. And they're like, okay, cool. So I've got shivers and stepped in shit. So, you know, you do a whole performance piece telling whatever those, those uh, polarizations are in a new improvisation, all in flow. There's a flow kitchen and there's about, what's at the end of the alphabet? Nothing, flow. The unknown, we step into flow. And we're cooking in the kitchen because we're spicing it up, we're spicing up our flow with cross, you know. We spice it up, we cook it up. So that's a new event that happened and it was incredible, people loved it. And Love it, sounds yeah. amazing. Yeah, so it's like, the series of Currents of Consciousness is about creating spaces where these transmissions can be exchanged, can be received, a, be received exactly, mm -hmm. and, and allowed to be played with and to be moved through into a new yeah. physical nature so we can tune into our new nature and then thus be you know, uh, upgraded in our construction yeah. kits for how we build our reality. It's 2020, Ooh, people. No. It's this Muti, Mutsole, Mustafiri. You know me, your movement medicine man. 
as the director of Currency of Consciousness Festival, Festival for Flow Arts, Arts, Science and Culture, artist director of Infomotion Dance Company, Info, artist director of Hip Hop Palace, Hip Hop Circus and Cabaret, CEO of Infomotion Worldwide. I'm 25 years old, recording artist. My music ain't even been out yet. I choreograph contemporary dance theater and I'm here to change the world. Radical Fierce Love. Can I just ask you two questions? Radical to Fierce up. Love. One, what does freedom mean to you? Oh, mate, you, you want to just go into open more questions? Oh, you know, just like a few freedom. words. Freedom. Um, freedom. Freedom. <laughs> you want to go into Freedom is the ability to, to own every decision you make, to own every expression you feel, to own every sensation that arises. I love that. Freedom is true sovereignty to our sensory experience of our capacity to mm. love, to mm. play, to experience joy, or the moments when we can seize that, we are truly free because we are not abiding to a shackle, to a person, to something else. You see a moment and you choose to experience that truth in itself because only you can experience your freedom. Mm. No one can give it to you. Emancipate yourself from. It's true. You know? None but ourselves can free our minds. And then... Listen to Bob, fam. <laughs> legends, <laughs> legends, <laughs> legends, legends be talking, yeah? And also, freedom comes in the body, freedom comes in the mind, freedom comes in the voice. Free all of those. You, yeah, can, be, you can truly be free in how you orchestrate your life when you recognize that freedom is the choice to, to, to orchestrate, to, to design to manifest when you're free to manifest the world is your playground and love that you, you are infinite in your creational ability and then finally if you could give any advice to anyone who's going through like this massive shift mm -hmm. and like experiencing all these other worlds and dimensions come to my events <laughs> I'll be, be, un, be 100% real like <laughs> what I'm trying to do at the moment for the community is trying to Speak to more people who are offering stepping stones for people. Yeah. How can who are going through those? Who, who, who have been doing it and who are offering services that allow them to go through it. Because, yeah. for instance, we can offer shared spaces for people to talk about what they're going through currently right now, but you need to go to experiences. Yeah, you yeah, need to yeah. seek actual experiences that can allow you to step into an awareness, yeah. that can allow you to receive something that might make you feel uncomfortable or you might have resistance for. If, you have got, if you've been wanting to go to someone's event for so long and you've been resistant to do it, ask yourself why. What are you scared of transforming into? Ooh, of I dare you. I dare you. Question. The events that you're most scared to go to, what are you scared to transform into? In yourself. Alchemy is real. Transformation is therapy. Inherit this earth because this is a new earth alliance. Radical, fierce. Love to you. Don't ever forget it. <laughs> yes! I'm done, bitch! Mind you, the motherfucker! Thank you, man. Fuck this shit! Thank you so much.